So good afternoon. Uh, my name is Gosha. Uh, my company is Asset Management Systems um, and it's a consultancy supporting clients in investment construction and facilities management sectors. So today I would like to share with you my unique experience related to project handovers. So this presentation covers different kinds of handover uh, called soft landings. This approach can be adapted to smooth the transition from construction to occupation in a bump-free manner. There is a broad consensus that buildings uh, handovers can be challenging. There are often shortcomings such as compromised customer relationships, unknown operational and maintenance costs, and the management requirement post practical completion or often an ongoing snagging and defects that impact revenue and rent collection from a property. So what's the problem um, and how can it be uh, fixed or smoothed? So we all know how a typical project handover could look like um, when it doesn't work properly or it, it goes slightly out of control. This is the project scenario on the left so if you can imagine the design and construction teams handing over keys to operations and facilities management, from practical completion, those teams start working out what exactly they have been given. And it's so at the same time, the end users are moving in, the fit outs uh, start if they haven't started already. When all of this is going on, the FM team starts to mobilize building services contracts and they are pulling the hair out to ensure they have the right information to deliver statutory compliance requirements um, and make sure that the building is being maintained. But it doesn't all have to be like that. There is a different way, um, and that's the project on the right. So it's a handover strategy called soft landings that can be adopted to smooth the transition from construction to operation in a bump-free manner. And it can be very successful if we start thinking about the end product and the building, how it's going to be used at the end, uh, at the beginning of the, um, of the project. So you have probably been wondering on many occasions why handovers can easily go out of control. And so the, fundament the fundamental reason is that we deal with three very significant phases in the life cycle of a building coming together at a single point of practical completion. So the phase one is related to design and construction. The characteristics of this phase is to generate the idea behind the building. So who is it for? How is it going to be used? And then the assembly of building components during the construction phase. It's worth mentioning that 80% of decisions related to asset performance after practical completion take place during the design and construction. Phase two is the operational phase and it's very much about what we do to the asset after it has been built. It's very much about getting the best performance from the building. In order to do that, a service delivery model and asset management system need to be developed to uh, keep control over the cost um, and put in place control measures to, so the building delivers the, um, the value over time. And uh, in phase three, which you are, I'm sure, familiar with, um, leads to a number of different outcomes. So when the building reaches the end of life, it can be refurbished, demolished or repurposed. All those three significant phases um, give you the total cost of ownership. So all of them kind of meet at the point of handover, but should not be forgotten um, at, the, at the stage of construction. So how do we smooth the transition and avoid a, a plane crash um, and a single point of failure at practical completion? So soft landings can be adopted as a solution to smooth that transition um, in a bump-free manner. Soft landings is a, a golden thread designed to be an integral part of the design and construction process that then overspills into operations and maintenance. It's not an add-on, 
it's a bridge between capex and opex leading to delivery of future proof building solutions accelerating time to value soft landings approach also adds value um, and it because it enables the quantification of the total cost of ownership at the point of design and construction it's also a catalyst for achieving net zero and reduction of environmental impact therefore meeting the co2 reduction targets So the soft landings framework has four key stages with clear deliverables for both CAPEX and OPEX teams review, reviewed at each gateway. This approach allows both construction and FM teams to work alongside leading to a more smooth transition from construction to occupation. Soft landings framework is delivered by a soft landing CD who provides the bridge between the client development team, design and construction, um, and the FM and operations. So the soft landings lead work closely with the client to set the strategic definition for the project and then oversees each gateway outputs and provides technical input and feedback into the project, advising on maintenance, uh, best practice facilities management, life cycle decision uh, making, uh, it supports setting up the service delivery model and asset management system and then the procurement of facilities management before practical completion. So soft landings uh, lead is a, is a program lead who is managing those deliverables um, for, to, to bridge the gap between the CAPEX and OPEX. The framework uh, can be introduced across uh, any type of project. So the most effective application is when soft landings are introduced at the beginning of the project or as soon as possible. For example, the pictures you are seeing are from a project called One Head on Street at the Region Street Portfolio. Um, in the past, the client struggle with the design and construction project not always being fit for purpose or leading to expensive retrofits in the operational phase um, and compromising customer satisfaction and revenue from lettings. Overall soft landings um, have been deployed on 12 capital projects to improve development outputs, ensure smooth handovers and therefore accelerating time to value and return on investment. So soft landings benefits have been realized in the operational budgets. The overall building design has been fit for future and achieved lower than expected maintenance costs and service charge budgets, um, improving profitability as a result of good decision making in the design process. So the revenue collection timescales have been much shorter um, and they moved from one year to three, four months after practical completion because that goalpost for operations um, started much earlier than normally would. So One Head on Street was a, a 10 million pound refurb uh, project, a space designed for professionals and startups in mind, where work and customer welfare met. Um, the customer health focused building design and operations have been in line with well building standards. And so that this meant that the customer facing space and service had to be uh, thought through from the outset. So bringing soft landings on board enabled to synchronize and align both CAPEX and OPEX activities to deliver that seamless customer facing product and transition. The, uh, the final building and services had the walk-in yoga classes, networking booths, well-being activities, spaces that could be reconfigured for yoga classes, um, from yoga classes to events, um, and that are at the heart of this sort of new business uh, community where built environment is actually addressing at the same time the uh, behaviors, operations, design from the outset. Soft landing is an innovative um, approach to smooth transition from construction to operation in a bump free manner. The key benefits of aligning capital and operational outcomes from the very early stages of the project accelerate benefits realization in the operational um, 
phases and result in early customer onboarding and rent collection. So the top layer, if you think of this sort of uh, a perfect scenario where there's a smooth transition, the, um, there is no delay in benefits realization. Um, operations and FM team are, are fully trained before the handover, so everyone knows what they need to do in terms of maintenance of buildings. Um, maintenance services and statutory compliance are secured before practical completion. And there is approximately 20% saving to be delivered over the total cost of ownership due to the um, strategic decisions made in the design phase. Also, if we think about the end product um, at the beginning of, of the project, we would have solved all the um, asset maintenance and retrofits or replacement problems really at the, um, at the beginning. So thank you very much for your time. Um, and if there are any questions, I'm uh, happy to answer them. Right. Um, you're leaving your detail. That was fantastic. It, God, yeah, I didn't realise just how efficient that is. It's good. How long have you been doing that, Gosha? Uh, about 15 years. Very good. It's efficient. <laughs> Uh, yes, I mean, I started as an architect um, and in my career I went into operations. So I have experience from both worlds um, and soft landings framework is then, you know, a, a connection of those two places. So uh, it's always kind of worked for me very well. <laughs>